Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say, welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. Hey, we're back in that book of Genesis. Got up to chapter 5. We're going to start with verse 1 here in a moment. On having finished chapter 4, you noted that we have two different seed lines. Chapter 4 was the seed line of Cain. And now in chapter 5, we're going to have the seed line of Adam. And many might say, well, why aren't they not one and the same? Well, that's pretty obvious when Cain is not in the genealogy. That means, do you know what genealogy? It means the genes of Adam. If somebody fathers a child, that child has the genes of both the father and the mother necessarily. Well, Cain didn't have Adam's genes. Therefore, he's not in his genealogy. I think that makes it real plain and everyone can grab onto that. But the important lesson that I want you to learn from, uh, I myself find genealogies, uh, I don't want to say boring, but uh, they're not all that exciting. But this is one time that a genealogy probably could be considered exciting because of the nearness of names. And there's even a little play on it um, in the Hebrew, like I called it to your attention, that Cain's genealogy had Jabel, Jubal, and Tubal. Those all come from the same prime, Yabel, in the Hebrew, which means to flow. And they all flowed uh, basically right along in Cain's genealogy. Um, and in the completion of the last lecture, it stated that people began to call upon the name of the Lord. And it loses a little bit from the Hebrew because the word began in the Hebrew is kalal. And kalal means to actually to wound or to profane. So let's translate it as it is. They began to profane the name of the Lord. Why? because they were already beginning to intermix with the fallen angels, the Nephilim, that we will get to in the next chapter. Don't miss it. But now, let's nail down, if we may, inasmuch as Enosh has been born of Seth, uh, Enosh meaning mortal man or frail, and mortal man is a little bit frail. Probably that's the first lesson you should learn from uh, the book of man. Okay, um, I can't remember, did we get into, let's start with the verse we quit in the last lecture. We got down to verse 4, documenting that we were coming into the genealogy of Adam. I'll just cover 3 and then pick it up with 4. And Adam lived 130 years old and begat a son in his own likeness after his image. And this is Ha'adam, the article is there, the Adam and called his name Seth. And I would ask, Seth was the first child of, of uh, Adam after Cain slew Abel. So verse 4, and it reads, And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years, and he begat sons and daughters. In other words, he begat other children, but the line always goes with the eldest uh, son, and so it is, five. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. That would be exactly 120 years after God um, had um, placed the sentence that we will read of in the next chapter. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but that he would only live 120 years, which we consider to be one of the lengths for a generation. Verse 6. And Seth lived 105 years and begat Enosh. And of course, Enosh means, um, uh, as I stated, mortal or uh, frail. And um, uh, the, the interesting thing 
Seth, and I probably should, I want to give you the, def, the full translation of these Hebrew names. Seth is compensation. Compensation probably named that because Seth, because, um, because uh, Cain had, had a slew Abel who would have been Adam's firstborn. Okay, and verse 7, and it reads, And Seth lived after he begat Enosh, that's frail, 807 years, and begat sons and daughters. He begat other sons and other daughters. Uh, verse 8, And all the days of Seth were 912 years, and he died. You note the longevity of these people, and probably from that you can gather... Uh, how man has polluted this earth, not to mention the sentence that God placed upon them, the 120 years which will come in the next chapter. But it shows you that man has polluted this earth uh, with uh, toxins and uh, poisons, let's just call it like it is, until a f there is no way a flesh body could hold together for 900 years with the state that our atmosphere, our waters, and so forth are in at this time. Not to mention that man has sinned as he has pulled away from God through the generations in one form or the other. Verse 9, And Enosh lived ninety years and begat Canaan. Now, Canaan means possession, possession. And Enosh, verse 10, and Enosh lived after he begat Canaan 815 years and begat sons and daughters. So we're getting quite a group together, as you can see here, as time uh, marches on, uh, because needless to say, it would seem that they waited until they were well along in years, perhaps compared to today, before they had their firstborn, but once they would have started and having lived for 900 years approximately, they would have had several children, no doubt. Verse 11. And all the days of Enosh were 905 years, and he died. Remember, God said in the day that, you, uh, the day that Adam sinned would be the day he would die. And a day with God is a thousand years, and none of these ever lived that thousand years. They died in the uh, Lord's day that they were born, which is to say, less than a 1,000-year period. Verse 12, And Canaan lived 70 years and begat Mahaliel, uh, which is to praise, praise, um, uh, praise of God, uh, would be the correct interpretation. So we see that um, Canaan no doubt loved the Lord, because he named this child praise of God. Uh, bear in mind, though it is not written, but becomes obvious from the word kelel, they began to profane the name of God, that things are waxing worse and worse as years go by. And uh, I'll speak, I'll address that further as in just a few minutes. Verse 13. And Canaan lived after he begat Mahaliel 840 years and begat sons and daughters. Verse 14. And all the days of Canaan were 910 years and he died. Now, uh, you hear a bit about cloning in this generation. Hey, when we've got all this kind of begats, don't worry, cloning will never, it'll never last, okay? We'll, we won't hear much of that. And as I stated, I still doubt that it happened without a little cheating on the corner somewhere. Verse 14, and all the days of Canaan, as, as I stated, were 910 years and he died. 15, and Mahaliel lived 60 and 5 years and begat Jorad. Now, Jorad... Um, is um, means um, uh, descend, descent, um, uh, and uh, we could call that however we wanted. Was it going downhill or was it um, the descent uh, in line that he just called him that? Well, hang on to the names for a moment. 
verse 16. And Mahalalel lived after he begat Jard 830 years and begat sons and daughters. Again, more in the family and no doubt very large families. And verse 17. And all the days of Mahalalel were 890 and five years, and he died. Verse 18. And Jared lived in 160 and two years, and he begat Enoch. Now, here we come to a real special person. Enoch uh, can be translated dedicated, but it can also be translated um, to initiate, the initiator, or the discipline, or it can be called discipline, for it was obvious, we know from his life, that uh, Enoch was a great one of discipline. Uh, he was, uh, in a sense, we know from the book of Jude that Enoch, this is not Enoch the son of Cain, but the Enoch the son of Adam, we learn from the book of Jude, was a prophet. And that's important, especially in as much as his name defines to, to initiate a new way, to initiate a new discipline. So we know that simply by the name and uh, the events that transpired, that, or that is to say happened to Enoch, uh, and he being a prophet, it says a great deal. It says a great deal more than is written. We did a work on this not long ago. You'll probably see it in the new newsletter uh, or, or on television in the third week. Um, Enoch, being a prophet, that in itself says a great deal more than is written for the simple fact that up until this day when the family began to grow, God walked with Adam and Eve and talked to them one-on-one, -on -one, so you didn't need a prophet. A prophet is one that God speaks to, and then that prophet sounds a warning to the people. So Enoch, the discipliner, or uh, I kind of like uh, to translate it initiate, which is to say he initiated a new way of thinking because God instructed him, for we'll find in a verse or two, that he walked with God. As Adam and Eve walked with God in the garden, so Enoch still walked with God, meaning that he was righteous, that he was well disciplined. Uh, whether you like it or not, you will find that all the people, both men and women, that God truly utilized were well-disciplined people. Common people, yes, but disciplined to the way of God. That is to say, God's plan, wanting to fulfill God's desires, that is to say, that that God desired his children do, to fulfill and bring about the completion, uh, uh, which was, has been in process from that day till this, of completing God's plan. So whether you like it or not, and most people do not like discipline, if you ask them, but yet at the same time, all people enjoy discipline after it is initiated. Why? You can't help feeling good about discipline and being able to be in control of yourself and discipline yourself to any discipline, whatever that discipline might be. But in this case, having no doubt that Enoch disciplined himself in pleasing God, in loving God, and God actually walked with him, talked with him. That's how a prophet gets his information, is from the Father. Uh, through the Spirit, yes, but from the Father. So you see, we have to know and understand from his name and the events that happen that we have quite a bit going on at this time that the pulling away from God and the intermixing of the Nephilim no doubt has already begun. 
Now, if you don't know what those terms are, don't worry about it. Set it over here on the shelf, and we'll go into detail, and I'll teach you those Hebrew words in the next uh, lecture um, in, in, um, at length, because I think it's important that you know. Uh, so we can read over a great deal from God's word, such as kalal from the prior chapter, meaning that they um, talked against God rather than talking to him. They polluted uh, God's way. And here we have one of the men that God would send, Enoch, the initiator or the discipliner, who would begin to bring back in that warning. So I guess in one of the th one of the things I, the point that I want to make is the fairness of our father. Don't think before the flood came that they weren't warned, because there were prophets and preachers sent to them, and that's very easily documented. And as we get on into that flood time, I will make I'll make that clear yet. God warned the people. Enoch was a prophet. And uh, that was um, one of the things that he accomplished was bringing in the discipline of God's word. All right, next verse. Let's go on to it. Verse 19. And Jared lived after he begat Enoch 800 years and begat sons and daughters. And I can't help uh, noting that uh, with these being large families, the replenishing of the earth uh, by the eighth day man, which this uh, particular chapter, in as much as it has the article uh, with being Adam and Eve, we see that that eighth day creation is growing considerably. Verse 20. And all the days of uh, Jared were 960 and two years, and he died. He, oh, see, he's not, he's less than. Uh, 40 years away from uh, being that thousand years old. But he was not the oldest. We'll come to the oldest in a moment. Verse 21. And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat Methuselah. And, um, and um, Methuselah being um, an interesting word in the Hebrew, really it has, it um, is made up of words we could call it a man of dart, if, if you wanted, a man that, um, um, that uh, with darts to the point of hitting a mark or casting, all right? Having a father like Enoch, I think you can probably put to that. It was part of the discipline. Okay, let's go to the next verse, if we may. Verse 22. And Enoch, listen carefully. Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah, Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. So if he was, interesting point, that he really died rather young, or he didn't die, I want to correct myself, but God chose to take him out of this mess at a very young age, we'll find it in the very near verse here, let's go on to it, 23. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years, one year for each day of the year. But then what happened? Again, he did not die, verse 24. And Enoch walked with God and was not, for God took him. He was translated, um, transformed, one of the only ones. So we see the goodness, and it was his faithfulness that brought this to pass, his righteousness. And um, um, how he must have been one, some kind of a prophet in the warnings that he would give. Now, I want to, uh, Methuselah will be the oldest man that has ever lived uh, since day one, from either the sixth day or the eighth day creation. I want to go back to the genealogy of Cain and show you a little difference here, though. In Cain's genealogy, you find Methusael, Methusiel, with El being the title God, whereas in Adam's genealogy, you have Methusa 
I will say Yah, where you have the sacred name of God. Not, not, not title, but his sacred name in Methusel, Methuselah, rather. But yet at the same time, I feel that God sends you a special message in the fact that many of the names, example, Cain had an Enoch. Cain had a, 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 um, a, um, a Lamech. And uh, Cain had near Methuselah with Methusel. What is God telling you? Two, gen two separate genealogies. But many times in reading the names, you would think somebody got the families mixed up here. Not so. It's God's way of telling you, yeah, yes, learn how to translate for yourself the names to grasp the meaning. But at the same time, the most important fact is to follow the gene. Because it would be through this gene that we're now studying, that is to say Adam, Ha-Adam, to be more specific, um, that Christ, the Savior of the world, being the only begotten of God, would come through this genealogy. And the point of knowing in the flesh who you're worshiping is the major point of flesh life, is to decide whether you're going to love God or Satan. Because love is the one thing that God will never force you to do, or it would be fake love, forced love, which is, that's, that's uh, out of his um, uh, line of thought even. He won't have it, because it would be false. And God wants nothing false, including children. You're either real, you're genuine, you have faith. Um, I, I could say something. And I will. Enoch was a prophet, but how good of a prophet was he? How many of the people did he convert? Well, many would say, well, he's going to branch down to one family, so they didn't do so hot. But then you would be judging God, and I assure you, you would be in error if that were to be your opinion. Because seed planting is a very long, drawn out. As no one has died yet, and no one has judged yet. And until the end of the millennium, you can't put your ducks in a row as to who's going in the lake of fire. So God's plan is a long plan. He's very patient. And as we have studied and read in Genesis, in uh, Second Peter chapter 3, God is long-suffering. And it is his will that all come to repentance. So I wanted to, I wanted to declare, watch the names, yes. But better yet, there will be many times that you will be um, deceived because names are also used in geographical identities. By that I mean, uh, we'll take the case of Moses' father-in-law, Jethro. Um, and uh, not Jethro, well, yes, Jethro, I suppose his name, uh, was a Kenite. Well, he really wasn't. He only lived in the land of the Kenites. All right? So there you go. Uh, watch the names, but keep up with the genes. That's important. Okay, let's go to the next verse, if we may. Verse 25, and it reads, And Methuselah lived in hundred, this is the oldest, a hundred eighty and seven years, and begat Lamech. Remember, Cain had a Lamech too. All right? And... Um, uh, verse, um, and Lamech, of course, being translated means powerful. Uh, 26. And Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech 700. Did we get that? We got 25, didn't we? Okay, 26. Well, let's go on with 26. 780 and two years and begat sons and daughters, okay? And 27, and all the days of Methuselah were 960 and nine years and he died, that being the oldest there were, okay? Now, of course, Lamech, we come to the basically the end of the, this particular genealogy because he will be the father of Noah. And then we open into a new time period 
But Noah, it's important that you know that he was definitely a son of Adam. All right, Adam. 28, and Lamech lived in 108 and two years and begat sons. Verse 29, and he called his name Noah, saying, this same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. Now it's strange, but it means rest also being the tent. He was in the line, but to bring comfort from the land that God had placed a curse on, Lamech expected big things from Noah. And do you know something? Noah did not let him down. That discipline that came from his great-grandfather, uh, Enoch, as it was passed down, um, that truth, no doubt, was maintained by the man that initiated the discipline and the man of the dart or that brought the point straight to the point to this one that was powerful Lamech to the one that is comforter can, Noah can will means rest or comforter as he stated because he will be the one that will comfort um, we see in a sense that um, uh, hoping for or looking forward in that time through this genealogy that the one Messiah that would present the comforter was even within this man's name. Okay, what's in a name? A lot. But at the same time, have the key or you're liable to get it in the wrong lock. Even if you have the key, make sure you don't put it in the wrong lock. All right? I hope that carries. Verse 30. And Lamech lived after he begat Noah 590 and five years and begat sons and daughters. And these large families continue. There were many, many people on the earth by this time. Yes, even from the eighth day creation, not to mention the land of Nod or the uh, multi um, areas of... Um, in which the six-day creation would spread out in the various, all the races that we have today were created on that day, the sixth day. Verse 31, And all the days of Lamech were 770 and seven years, and he died. Now we're down to Noah. 32, And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. I want to read that one more time. Noah was 500 years old. And Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. 500 years before he had his first child. He was being very specific, wasn't he? You see... Things had grown so bad, and no doubt it's one of the reasons that God translated Enoch. It was deteriorating to a point that these fallen angels had um, intermixed. And in the next chapter is where we really go into that. And I want to do it justice, so I'm not going to go very far into it today. Because it's a subject that you must absorb and understand. And it is not commonly or necessarily taught. Why? Because it's controversial. But it's God's word, and without it, you are handicapped to understand the rest of God's word. You must know and understand, because much even of the New Testament uh, has to do or runs reference with the chapter we're, we're about to go into. And uh, even down to the point that it would be the likeness of the return of Christ would be like this. So we see that things had deteriorated tremendously, and I have little doubt in my mind, uh, it's not that important, but I think this is the reason that Noah had to look a long time for a wife that hadn't already participated in these hybrids that were becoming plentiful. And many might say, well, how can you say that? Uh, it doesn't even talk about it until chapter 6. They had a prophet. 
Enoch. And it was bad enough that God just pulled him out of it. God was being very, he was very disappointed with man at this time. He just literally reached down and took the prophet. There wasn't another one. They had to carry over on what that prophet had said because God pulled the prophet and that's kind of like pulling the plug on morality, especially when you have uh, people from a different time walking the earth with them at that time. Now, I want to go into the first verse. Uh, no, I want to say one other thing. I think we'll hold the first verse until the next lecture. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Shem wasn't the firstborn. They're reversed. Japheth was the firstborn, and, and then Ham, and then Seth, Shem, rather. Shem was the youngest. And um, we'll, we'll say more about that as we get into further into the word of the fact that the youngest was actually chosen. Why? Well, we'll see as we go, won't we? So be prepared in the next lecture to go into an in-depth study as to who the sons of God are or were and still are. Um, how do we determine? And also, I will teach you a new Hebrew word, not new to most of you, nephil. Nephil, singular, nephilim, plural, of fallen angels. And what they brought into the world, whereby that you have absolutely no doubt in your mind as to what the word states. And many might say, well, how can we know you're telling us the truth? Because we also tell you that with a simple Strong's Concordance, which translates every word in the English Bible back to its original language with translation rather than transliteration, gives you the opportunity to test this old boy out. See if I'm trying to pull your leg. I don't know. Do you want to learn God's word? Don't miss the next lecture. All right. Bless your heart. You listen a moment. Won't you please?